Broadband over power lines is a technology to enable the delivery of high-speed data services over the power distribution system. And this video gives an audible and visual demonstration of this technology's potential for interference to the high-frequency radio spectrum. It is currently being trialled in Mount Nelson, the suburb of the capital city of Hobart. Here I am heading along Churchill Avenue through the middle of the University of Tasmania. We can start to hear the BPL signal on 3.57 MHz as we pass the power substation on the right that is injecting the BPL signal. I turn the corner into Nelson Road and the strength of the signal progressively increases to the point where it swamps everything else on the frequency. I head up the hill and past the Hutchins School playing fields on the left. The signal meter at the top of the screen shows the signal strength varying with BPL emissions. Currently it's indicating S9 plus levels and this demonstrates excessively high interference levels. The signal can be heard to fluctuate as we drive along Nelson Road. This can be attributed to variations in the power distribution system and the frequency being utilised. We again can hear the alternator noise break through as the BPL signal momentarily decreases as we round Bend 2 on Nelson Road. In this video I am using standard mobile amateur radio equipment with no audio or video manipulation. I have purposely left the car alternator noise in the audio recording. This BPL trial is being run by Aurora Energy, the local power retailer, and its telecommunications arm Taztel. The BPL system used in this trial is manufactured by Mitsubishi and it utilises the DS2 BPL chipset. The system uses spread spectrum OFDM techniques to transmit data along the power line in the 3 to 34 MHz range. Radio amateurs, hams, are licensed users of certain parts of the radio spectrum who have to pass up to three examinations that are regulated by the Australian Communications and Media Authority and delivered by the Wireless Institute of Australia to prove that they are competent to operate radio equipment in the allocated radio frequency spectrum and within strict electromagnetic radiation standards. BPL operators are not licensed users of the 3 to 30 MHz spectrum and yet this technology they are deploying has the potential to cause interference across the whole HF part of the radio spectrum. As a group, amateurs only use portions of the spectrum and as individuals we use just sections of those portions at any one time. Whereas BPL uses large portions of the HF spectrum and leaves no room for other users within the BPL area. We are not the only users of the high frequency spectrum. The Department of Defence, Aeronautical Services, Broadcasters, Radio Astronomers, Maritime Emergency Services and many other users utilise the international natural resource we call the radio spectrum. As we head round Bend 5, I again go into the area of very strong BPL interference that swamps everything else on the band. You can hear the stopping and starting of the data network. The signal meter is indicating S9 plus that blanks everything else on the band. It would be impossible for high frequency radio operation. With this level of interference, an amateur radio operator could not hear anything on the band and therefore would not be able to safely transmit as they would not know if they were interfering with another operator. They could not hear any distress or emergency signals. In fact, they cannot hear any signals other than the BPL interference. Each time a radio amateur operates, he or she listens first to ensure that their transmission will not interfere with an existing communication path. With the presence of BPL, the amateur is prevented from hearing as to whether another communication already exists or not. Thus, he or she is prevented from transmitting anything at all as well as hearing any reply that may have been possible. BPL systems are an array of radio transceivers using the power lines as the transmission medium. These power lines act in some instances as large antennas with dynamically varying characteristics due to power line network configuration changes and construction methods.
On our right is the Mount Nelson Primary School, and from this area of the BPL network, the backhaul or underlying network delivery is using wireless technology. Another issue for radio amateurs is that BPL systems are themselves highly susceptible to radio frequency interference from other sources and testing here in Mount Nelson and around the world has shown that very low levels of radio frequency energy close to BPL systems disrupt network activity and would affect real-time applications like voice over IP, that's phone services, and on-demanded or streaming video services to a greater extent than, say, email and web browsing. Therefore, it would be very difficult for an active amateur operator in a BPL-enabled suburb to coexist without a range of issues relating to the level of emissions when receiving and also the RF susceptibility of the BPL system when transmitting. To reduce interference levels, there is a technique called notching, which lowers the BPL signal level. However, the notching employed in the Mount Nelson trial is only partially effective. Here we are entering an area that is notched, and as you can see and hear, the BPL signal and the S meter tells us there remains an underlying signal level of between S3 and S5 and interference is still present in the background. BPL is not an efficient technology. Injection of radio frequency onto the power lines originally designed to carry power is a very inefficient process and this means that the signal needs to be injected with higher power and boosted every three or four power poles and this makes the technology much more expensive than other competing technologies. This also means it is not cost effective technology in rural areas and relies on densely populated areas, the suburbs, to get an appreciable return on investment. How do we know it's BPL? If we take a look at the spectrum from the receiver, it shows a consistent series of carriers or signals associated with techniques used with this BPL deployment. We can see data superimposed on each carrier and we can even see the system configuration dynamically change as we listen. This has been VK7 Tango Whiskey. Thanks for listening.